been a uh, been a hot topic lately. I'm, uh, and we've uh, we've recently taken the first step um, towards working on this stuff, and we um, we about almost two weeks ago started dropping uh, all of our our PKI invalid prefixes on our peering edge. Um, so. I'm going to skip this slide because we've heard a lot about our PKI and what it is and kind of how it is and why, why it's good and some things maybe why it doesn't, it's not so good, so we're going to skip that. What I really wanted to talk about was kind of what we did and, and how we got to that point. Um, so this uh, very basic drawing. We, uh, we deployed four instances of the RIPE v3 validator um, in two different locations. Well, four instances total, two in each of the locations within our network. Um, we establish the RTR sessions to our peering routers, those are the IGRs, and they have access out to the, to the world um, so they can pull down all the ROAs and all those fun things. Uh, so this is kind of what we wanted to walk through. So we first did that deployment, got the, uh, got the ROAs, uh, got the VRPs going out to the routers, so the routers have that validation state. Um, we did a lot of checks to verify, make sure everything's consistent, everything is, uh, um, the routers are seeing all the state and, and seeing the same state from all of the, uh, all of the RPs out there. And, uh, and that they were stable and, and everything stayed up and was working. So, and then you can, at that point, would also be a good time to start integrating some other service checks. Um, so that you can make sure that your, your sessions are up like you would do with any new kind of BGP session or policy. Um, the next thing we wanted to do was we wanted to try and understand how that, you know, when we take that next step for, of dropping the, the invalids, how, uh, how is that going to impact our traffic? How much traffic does it impact and, you know, what's it going to do? Am I going to have VPs yelling at me at 3 in the morning and things like that? Uh, so we didn't have the, the fancy new tools that, uh, that Job had, um, uh, has contributed to, uh, to developing um, with PMACCT, but, uh, which I've linked to down here. Um, so we put in a, a, just a regular policy on our BGP sessions um, to apply a BGP community. Once that BGP community is in place, I can use my standard NetFlow analysis tools to look at that traffic and, and see what um, uh, what, the, what that impact's gonna be, what traffic matches those, uh, those communities. Um, we also started reaching out to several of our peers uh, who are, had customers that are originating invalid routes and let them know, hey, you guys have customers that are doing bad things. Um, and uh, so we were trying to communicate out that, that this is going to be an impact at some point. Um, one of the gotchas that, uh, that the fancy new tools take into account that we didn't uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to leverage, we had to do it manually. You have to watch out for things that have like a valid or an uh, unknown uh, covering aggregate block. So even though the more specific might be invalid. Um, so you're not, you're not going to lose connectivity to that when we drop those invalids. You've, the, the trick is to do the analysis um, in such a way that it's only, uh, only impacting the um, the prefixes that you actually are going to completely lose visibility to. Um, we did take a, uh, an additional step of deprefing those invalids. Um, it had a little bit of impact to drop some, of, to decrease some of the traffic and shift it away to away from those prefixes, but really a lot less than we expected. Um, it's kind of useful to play with and look at. It's not a long-term solution. It doesn't work very well. Um, and then the final solution, final step is to, is to drop those uh, packets, or drop those routes coming in, um, which we did uh, a couple weeks ago. What happened? Really, it was almost a non-event. Um, we, we saw very little impact to the traffic. After doing our analysis, it was in the hundreds of megabits of, uh, of traffic uh, that we were expected to drop, and that's about what we saw. Um, handfuls of, uh, of trouble reports. And I really think that because the RPKI is such an opt-in system that somebody actually had to actively go in and register a ROA um, and, and kind of knew what they were doing, um, then they were, when, when they found out that their prefix wasn't working within 7018 um, and it was pointed out, hey, maybe go check your ROA, um, they, they were very 
it was very easy to get them to fix it. Um, we didn't get you know, lots of escalations, people jumping up and down screaming, hey, you broke the internet, don't do that anymore. Um, so it went, uh, was pretty smoothly. Um, just a couple of quick observations on what we saw. Um, it, most of the invalid ROAs that are out there, it's, it really just seems to be very, um, it's mistake driven. Um, you know, so far, they, there hasn't been very much operational impact to getting it wrong. Um, so, so it's very easy for those ROAs to fall out of sync with what's actually in your network, what you're actually advertising. Um, in some cases, we think that maybe some operators may have misunderstood what, what's supposed to go into the ROA. Uh, and in, in some cases, you know, they just, they, maybe somebody uh, published for their aggregates, but maybe didn't publish for what they delegated to customers. Lots of different potential reasons. These are just kind of what we thought of, what it looked like probably happened. Um, seems to have been minimal impact. Um, and so we really think everybody else should, uh, you know, let's get this done. Um, any questions, please? Roland Dobbins, uh, NetScout Arbor. Uh, first of all, kudos to AT&T and to NTT. This has been fantastic news um, recently with, with the RMP KKI stuff. I know this is a lightning talk, but could you talk just a little bit about any of these significant layer eight hurdles that you had to go through to get um, permission to do this and anything that you think might also, other operators might need to keep in mind as they start down this path internally? Yeah, so um, th this was really, this was our experience with, uh, with what we did. We had to really um, sit down and do that analysis and see what that traffic is gonna look like. Um, and, and it's really pretty specific to our customer cone and the, the networks externally that they would want to be able to communicate with. Um, and so the, you know, the, the intersection of that with the invalid ROAs that are out there seems not to have been high. So um, you, know, you have to do the analysis yourself and, and, and make that justification to your own management to, to see that, you know, that it works. But once we laid out you know, what, um, what we expected it to be and we made sure that we had all the, all the things covered to notify their operation centers so that uh, if we did get problem reports that somebody would know how to look up, is this an invalid route prefix or you know, anything like that, um, it was fairly straightforward to get that approval um, to, to make that step. Don Smith, Centrelink. Um, first off, when you did the DPREF, were you able to collect a lot of metrics, a little metrics, or not many? Um, we didn't have a lot of metrics on that, um, but you know, anecdotally, when we made that change, there was very little change in the, in the prefixes for the, you know, what was the best path. Uh, very little change in that respect, um, which makes a lot of sense when you go back and look at it because most of the invalids that we were seeing were in fact the longest match. And, and it's clear that you would have, but the deep pref you did was as low as you could go basically, or pretty darn low. It was pretty darn low, yeah. <laughs> Doug Montgomery Nest, <clears throat> first congratulations. Second, um, I want to remind everybody to be careful about using the term invalid ROA when you really mean invalid, invalid route, route because yes. it's Sorry. the Thank source you. of infinite confusion in this field. Yes. Anybody else? Great. 